all, my name is Sarah Dietschy, Rhymes with Peachy. Have you switched to Mac recently? Whether it's a recent upgrade or you've been over on Mac for a while, hey, you're gonna learn some handy shortcuts and also some new features in Mac OS Monterey. So no matter where you are on the spectrum, hopefully this video is helpful. I have done, oh gosh, so many, did you just switch to Windows videos? Um, because in 2016, my journey with Mac came to a pause with the release of um, the MacBooks that were just terrible. And I started my Windows journey again. And so I've been primarily Windows for I would say four or five years, but um, you know, I use both systems often. And again, with these new MacBook Pros, I find myself on Mac, well, more than ever in the past four years. And shout out to Warby Parker for sponsoring this video. They they are the one-stop shop for all things eyeglasses, sunglasses, contacts, and eye care. A little bit more on that later. I actually learned a lot making this video. I'm brushing up on my Mac skills, so hopefully you will as well. So the two ones that I've talked about in the past, they're in multiple videos, so we're not gonna spend a lot of time on them, but if you are coming specifically from Windows and you just miss you know, Windows management and snapping and all of that, my favorite app for that is Magnet. It's where you can use shortcuts like Option command left key right key or shift command to snap your windows to the left snap them to the right or to full size your window by dragging the application to the top of your screen just like in windows so i love that application and also alt tab allows you to switch in between applications just like command tab but you can actually see the windows and you can switch in between the different windows of that application so when you go command tab it's just the application so if you have three safari windows open you're not gonna see those individual windows and alt tab. It's a free app that you can download solves this so two awesome tools right off the bat. Let's just get into this. Before I made this video, I actually tweeted out to you guys to make sure I didn't miss anything. And I realized, okay, a lot of y'all had major struggles with the basics. So that's where we're gonna start and we're gonna get more complicated as we go along. Everything that you use control for on a PC is basically command on a Mac. Still to this day, when I'm on the Mac, I'm hitting the function key like crazy, thinking that it's control for copy and pasting. If it really bothers you, you can switch control and command via key modifiers, but that's a little advanced. I just encourage you to just get used to command, command, command. For the Windows users who are used to hitting the Windows button for everything, to search for applications, documents, to do some math. So that is now replaced by Spotlight. Spotlight search is super handy for all of that. It is command spacebar. You can do math equations, you can search for things. So command spacebar, command spacebar. If you miss that forward delete key, which yeah, I use actually all the time, don't don't fret, you can use the function key before you press delete to forward delete text. I don't know why it's function delete. I feel like it'd be more natural for it to be like command delete, but that's whatever, that does other things. A lot of y'all had issues with external drives, which I was like, that's weird, but I guess you do it such in a weird way on Windows that when you come over to Mac, you just can't find the button, right? But it's actually super simple. So click on what you want to eject and press command E or just right click and then hit eject. Also disk utility, and you can find this application by again, just command spacebar, spotlight searching it, will be your best friend. Anything that you need to do via external drives, you can do it here. So you can mount drives, unmount drives, create partitions, and something that I had to do recently to John's SD card that got corrupted after he was out and about in the Texas snow, and it wasn't popping up on his Mac. So I went into disk utility, I saw the SD card, but it was grayed out, so I repaired the drive, and then I mounted it, and Mwah, voila, problem solved. I feel like this was actually the biggest pet peeve. So when you're on Windows, you press the X button in the top right hand corner and that closes your application, right? Well, if it's the last window. So if you have two windows of Chrome open, when you exit out of the last window, that quits Chrome. But Mac is different. It is more program oriented and that when you open up Safari, hey, Safari is there no matter what, if you have five windows open or zero. So to actually quit the application, you have to press Command Q or go up to that menu bar and drag down on the application menu and say quit Safari 
or you can actually just go above and beyond and use this super old app, which I know it works like two generations behind. I'm not sure if it works on Mac OS Monterey, but there's an application that's called Red Quits that will actually quit the application when you close the window, the last window, just like on Windows. <laughs> on Mac, you always have that menu bar at the top of your display. And if you want some of those cool apps that people use to track statistics of your computer, um, there's two very popular ones. So one is called iStat and another is called Sensei. So Sensei.app. At a quick glance, you can just check on the vitals of your computer. And then another great app I'd recommend is Clean My Mac. So this has a cool um, menu bar that you can use for some stats and stuff, but it, it goes even above and beyond that. Deleting applications is much easier than you would think. You either drag the application to the trash or just right click delete. Like that's that's it. Just remember when you delete things every now and then you need to empty your trash to actually free up that space on your hard drive. If you have a messy desktop, right click on your desktop and select clean up. And then if you have a ton of screenshots, you can right click use stacks and it basically stacks up all of the uh, similar files. So if you have a ton of JPEGs, it'll put that in one stack. If you have a ton of documents, it'll put it in another stack. I really, really wish I had this on my desktop computer over in Windows land because, um, well, my desktop isn't that pretty. Pretty. Don't make fun of me, okay? This is where the grind happens. So I'm not that focused on organization. <laughs> Command I is annoying for people when they wanna know the total file size of multiple files because it just pops up all of the individual information panes. Panes, panels, windows, what, why did I use that word? To avoid this, you can use Command Control I to only open up one panel where it will show the total size of all of the files that you've selected and your you know desktop isn't just littered with like all of the panels. If you don't have a Windows management app like Magnet that I mentioned, mentioned earlier, you can hover over the green button in any application and have those options. And if you want more options, hold down option and you'll get even more. Okay. How are we feeling? Cause we're not even halfway through. Do you need a break? Do you need a break? I think, I think I might need a break. So just a quick word from our lovely sponsor, Warby Parker. Oh, hi there. Okay. Well, one more thing that I forgot to mention that's actually essential to the Mac experience once you switch is look in the part. You got to look cool, which sometimes includes super cool hipster cool glasses. Maybe, maybe. And oh my gosh, that's perfect because Warby Parker is sponsoring this video. Man, they are epic. All the glasses that I wear, Warby Parker. People ask me all the time, Warby Parker. They are committed to exceptional eye care both in the store and online. They offer eyeglasses, sunglasses, eye exams, and contact lenses. They are the one-stop shop for your eyeballs. That's what I like to say. Okay, I just got a new home try-on kit where you can try five frames for free for five days. They send the glasses straight to you. Um, it's always fun. Okay, selfishly, guys, can you turn the camera around? Can you see what the light looks? Does it does it come out on camera? Yeah. Is it making my Warby Parker glasses just sparkle even more? <laughs> Yeah, it looks great. <laughs> I actually forgot what I ordered, so this will be exciting. Oh, they got a little, this feels like a newspaper. Oh, it's like a little home try-on handbook. We offer everything you need for happier eyes at a price that leaves you with money in your park, park it? Frame start at only $95. From designer quality glasses and contacts to eye exams and vision tests. So you can try them on for five days. They include a prepaid label in the box that you can send the glasses back you say which glasses that you like, and then they put your prescription in them. There's even like a puzzle in the back. No, I know. Look how cool this is. There's a crossword puzzle. There's many puzzles. All right, time to try the first pair, and you guys can let me know down in the comments below which one you like the best. These are from Warby Parker. I love them. They match my eyes. Um, sorry, I feel like I'm on one today. Um, but frames start at only $95. That includes prescriptions, progressives, and also blue light glasses, which help your eyes strain less when you're looking at the screens. I look at all of the screens all of the time, so super helpful. Choosing the frames is so easy, whether you use their quiz, where you answer a few questions about your face and also maybe the style you like, or you can also do the virtual try-on where you can see how the glasses will look on your face. And then you can order a home try-on kit where, again, you can have 
five frames for five days for free. Try them on, see what you like, and send back what you don't. So if you wanna try Warby Parker's free home try-on program, check out my link in the description below, or you can go to warbyparker.com slash saradici. That's me. Okay, back to some more Mac tips. Okay, and we're back. Thank you so much, Sarah from the office for that word. Okay, so I'm gonna rapid fire here some keyboard shortcuts. Now, this isn't to say that you need to remember all these because we're gonna be going pretty quick. The goal here is to remember a few of them that stick out that you're like, wow, that's gonna be good for my process because I do that a lot. Command M minimizes any application you're in. Command H hides your application. These are easy ones, but to copy and paste, it's Command C and Command V. The equivalent over in Windows is Control C, Control V. Shift Command 3 lets you take a screenshot of your entire computer screen. And when you do that, it's gonna show up in the bottom right hand corner. If you want it to just save to the desktop, you can just not do anything with it or slide it off to the side using your trackpad or mouse. But if you wanna annotate, you can click on it, draw all over it, and then save it to wherever you want. If you just wanna add it to your clipboard, um, because again, in Mac OS, when you screenshot, it's saved to your desktop, not your clipboard. You can just right click on the screenshot and then copy to clipboard. And then shift command four is for screenshotting a specific area on your desktop, not the entire uh, desktop. So shift command three, entire screen, shift command four, a specific area that you choose. Okay, so this next one is something I didn't even notice was a thing until you guys pointed it out. Say I want to cut a document from one folder and then paste it into the next, and that means that it's gonna get rid of it, you know, in that first folder. So actually on Mac, when you go to that file that you wanna copy and paste or cut and paste, when you right click, there's actually no cut option, it's just copy. So basically you have to use the shortcut Command X that is going to cut the file and then you can paste it wherever you want it. Command N gives you a new finder window or web browser window, whatever application you're in. And then Shift Command N gives you a new finder folder. These I'm about to tell you, I actually had no idea. So I learned something today. When you're in Finder, you can do Shift Command D to go to desktop immediately. Shift Command A goes to applications and then Option Command L automatically goes to your downloads folder, which I always am going to my downloads folder. So that would be a way to do it via my keyboard instead of my mouse. Command F3 shows your desktop. Command F is for finding items. So searching in a Word document or on a web page. Command P is for printing a document. And the space bar. The space bar is one of the most important parts of Mac OS that if you've been on Mac before, you probably already know how to use. But if you're not familiar with it on Windows, you can use that to preview any kind of a file, well, most files, and then it using the arrow keys to just toggle in between said files. Download Quick Look on Windows if you want that over on Windows. Ha, huh, okay, so those were the rapid fire keyboard shortcuts. Hopefully you learned something. Um, while I was going through this Twitter thread, I learned that a lot of you guys don't like Finder. You got beef with Finder. You miss files, even though files isn't the most pretty. One of the most useful shortcuts you'll wanna remember is go to folder. So you can access this by hitting Command Shift G. From here, a dialog window pops up with a search slot to enter a file path, and that allows you to head directly to that file instead of spending time, you know, clicking around to find it. This is super helpful in environments where you're working with multiple people. Maybe you have a server that you all share and there's just files on top of folders, on top of folders, on top of files. And you need to share, well, a direct path to a file. You don't have that lovely file directory backslash situation that's on top of files on Windows. So how do you actually access a file's path since you don't have what you have on Windows? Well, there's two different ways. So you can right click on a specific file and after that menu appears, continue to hold hold and right click, add the option key. And so from there, you'll get a new menu select copy where it shows the file name or the folder name. So when you've pressed that copy, you've actually copied the file path to send to a colleague or to save for quick access later. The other way is to drag and drop the file or folder over um, the go to folder dialog box. Say you have multiple finder windows open and you wanna toggle in between them. You can press command tilde and it'll toggle in between the different finder windows. This is super helpful, 
especially for other applications, if you have like four Safari windows open, you can use Command tilde. I actually personally like to use tabs in Finder, so Command T um, starts a new tab. And of course, you know, Command N is to start a new, uh, entirely new Finder window. And for you creative types that are watching and you use Adobe products, if you are in Premiere, After Effects, all those applications that have heavy duty render files or, um, you know, big caches, even Photoshop and Lightroom has this, a lot of those files are hidden in the library. So when you're in Finder, go to the Go menu bar and press Option. That's gonna pop up Library. And a lot of those Adobe files are in Application Support and then the Common folder. And you'll find a lot of the media cache that you can go in and just delete. Now you don't wanna do this to current projects, but past projects, doesn't matter, get them out of here. You'll have a lot of hidden gigs in, in these folders. Copying and pasting. So I agree with you guys, one of the most annoying things coming over to Mac is you don't have that clipboard where you can access your past like four things that you copied and then you can paste whatever one you want accordingly after holding down Windows V. So there's really no way to get around this on Mac, so I'll just offer some alternatives. So there are apps like Paste or Unclutter, or you can just use a workaround. Notes actually got a cool update recently where if you drag your mouse to the bottom right hand corner of your computer, it'll start a new quick note. Um, that is a really quick way to just like copy and paste assets if you need a kind of like impromptu clipboard. Copy and paste what you need there and then reference those images or text when you need to paste them. And the last thing I wanna mention before I mention a few things that are new uh, with the new Mac OS Monterey is Hot Corners. Hot Corners have been around for a while, but this is just a quick way to automatically start your screensaver or do app expose. You can assign those in settings and basically wherever you drag your mouse to the right-hand corner, to the left-hand corner, um, it does certain actions. So I basically have, uh, when I drag over to the left bottom corner, that starts my screensaver um, and yeah, it's just a thing. Quick, fun, I don't know. <laughs> Okay, so um, at this point, this is me realizing how long of a video this is gonna be, but hopefully it's helpful. Smash that like button, smash that subscribe button if it's helpful. Let's move on to what's new in Monterey. Listen, a lot of you guys are having some stability issues with Monterey. Someone went as far to say that Monterey was the Vista of Mac OS. Now, I don't know if I agree with that. That is like severely aggressive. Um, but it was interesting to see that because me personally, um, I was using an iMac for a few months uh, back in New York when I was in between offices. And like, I hated Catalina so bad. That was the previous operating system. I had so many issues with that. It was quite insufferable for me. So compared to Catalina, going to Monterey, I actually don't have a ton of issues, but apparently some of you guys are. Let me know in the comments if you are. You wanna come up, Kitty? Yeah. Oh, Judy's gonna visit for the last bit of the video. You wanna hear about Monterey? Yeah. Okay, we just have to rearrange everything for Judy, right? Gotta make him happy. Hey! What? What, baby? Okay, so with all that said, probably the coolest thing with the most recent update is universal control. This is something we didn't get right out the gate. We have to wait for 12.3, which currently, as of filming this, it's in public beta, um, but hopefully it is just right around the corner for everyone to download. This allows for one Apple device's keyboard and mouse to control another seamlessly. So I could have my MacBook right here and then have my iPad to the left of me and completely control my iPad with the mouse and keyboard of my MacBook. I could use my MacBook to control an iMac. You can even copy and paste things from one device to the next. So if you're familiar with Logitech Flow with their MX Masters or their keyboards, it's kind of similar to that, but this is a solution coming directly from Apple, so it works much more seamlessly. So you have to have 12.3 installed on a Mac and iPadOS 15.4 for this to work. And literally it just, works. I'll link an article down below to like force it to work if you're having issues, but I didn't have to do anything. It's just, it's automatic. I feel like this is a super cool evolution of Sidecar. If you don't know what Sidecar is, it's where you can use an iPad as a second screen to a Mac or a MacBook. So they're not exactly the same thing and they serve specific purposes still. Um, but the fact that Apple is just adding universal control, they have Sidecar, it's kind of like crushing my hopes and dreams for a touch MacBook because there's so 
so clearly saying, hey, these things now talk to each other. They're in the same ecosystem. You can use them individually together. Um, so you don't need, you don't need a touch MacBook. No, we're not gonna give that to you. Look at all these services we're giving you to use everything together. So buy all the things. Okay, fine, Apple. One bug to be aware of right now if you're gonna download the public beta before it is out to everyone is the iPad Pro Magic Keyboard cannot control Mac OS, but hopefully, again, this will be updated. Okay, let's go. Woo, trying to, you know, pump up myself for the last few. Let's, let's, let's go, Sarah. For the first time ever, you can update the firmware of your AirPods. You just pair them to a Mac, have the earphones in the case, close them, and wait for it to update. SharePlay is super cool. You can watch TV shows and just hang out with the squad over FaceTime. And recently, I was literally sharing Zillow listings with my mom, and um, on Zillow, it popped up, hey, do you want to use SharePlay to, to share this? Now, I just use the share the screen option. I don't know if that's like officially SharePlay. The branding of this is kind of fusing on like how to do it and what is SharePlay? Does it come from the applications? Um, is it you just like using the share window option on your Mac? But nonetheless, super great feature. Kitty, can you decide where you want to go? What are you doing? So like you can airplay your iPhone or your Mac to an Apple TV to, um, you know, view pictures from your iPhone on your TV or etc. You can now airplay to Mac. So this lets you play any type of content from an iPhone, iPad, or even a Mac to another Mac, Mac to Mac, iPhone to Mac. You can also extend or mirror an Apple device's display to a Mac and use it as an external display. A lot of people have been waiting for that. This works both wirelessly and wired. Kitty, your hair is getting all over the place. Guys, I actually had more things written to talk about today, but um, it's getting a little out of hand. So if you're new Mac users and you wanna learn even more, you can search about things like shortcuts, which has been on the iPhone for a while, but now it's on Mac. Um, you know, you can create shortcuts to do literally anything, combine a series of screenshots to make a GIF, all the things you can code your own. There's a lot of great new things about Safari, like extensions and tab groups. We've had that um, forever in Chrome, um, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of stuff, but if you found this helpful, hey, check out my Warby Parker link in the description below. It's where I get most of my glasses. I love them so much and supporting sponsors on this channel helps you support me. So if you need glasses, if you need contacts, check out that link, um, like and subscribe. Like for Judy, look at this sweet baby. Oh, Judy, we love you, Judy. Yeah, they love you, Judy. Oh, Judy, when we first got you, you weren't shedding at all, and now you're shedding everywhere. Okay, well, I think the only thing to say to y'all is stay peachy. Okay, bye. Bye, Judy.